We good? <laughs> All right, guys, let's get started. Um, I want to pray real quick, turn it over to David. This is really David's show. I don't even know why I'm up here. Um, I got like a little thing to do at the end. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so at the end of this, um, we're going to do a little activation, interactive thing with Jesus. So um, I think it's going to be really good. Um, and David's going to kind of handle the crux of this or the main part of it. So let's just pray. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us, for helping us, for guiding us, for teaching us in all your ways, and for helping us to see who you really are. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for creating us. We thank you for your glory and your presence, Lord. And we pray the Holy Spirit, His presence increase tonight, Lord. Increase. The presence fill this place as we talk about the imagination and the eyes of our hearts. And seeing into the Spirit, Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. <clears throat> awesome. So we've already talked about a lot today, and so this is not really going to be anything new, per se. Just um, mostly having a different mindset towards imagination. So I also want to start out with Webster's definition of what the imagination is. And uh, Webster defines it as the act or power of forming a mental image of something not present to the senses or never before wholly perceived in reality. So right away when I read that, I said, wow, that sounds a lot like faith. That sounds a lot like Hebrews 11.1. What says now faith be, now faith brings hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. <clears throat> so now I I'm supposed to kind of introduce myself. So I have always been a uh, bit of a hands-on person, and the Lord has always blessed me with. Uh, ability to use my imagination as a as an only child um, you come up with ways to keep yourself entertained and uh, to just cope with being alone all the time I guess <laughs> but you're not really alone because the Lord is with you but there's many times I feel the Lord will show you something in, in your mind's eye which I'm now learning is uh, actually being able to see things that are in the spiritual realm that he that he's wanting to show you you know and so I mean, there, there's times, many times, even recently, where people have prayed over me and I've seen like a, a, a bucket going into a well and it coming up and just being able to take that to the Lord and ask him, like, what are you trying to show me? You know, what is, what does this mean? Because if we're not careful, we'll just blow it off. You know, we're very quick to say, oh, that was just my imagination, you know, or, oh, that's just a silly thought. So, um, the Lord... The Lord can actually teach us supernaturally through our imagination. He can actually show us things that are, are to come in our future or things that he wants to, to show us and tell us. And then he can confirm that through his word later on. Uh, let me just read a couple more definitions of Webster's definition of the imagination. It's also referred to as the creative ability. The ability to come confront or deal with a problem. Um, the ability to be resourceful, you know, sometimes uh, I think as, as men, like, you know, like we were just telling me in the garage, uh, we're able to kind of deconstruct things with our mind and we can mm -hmm. see it, you know, the Lord gives us this ability to do that. Just men? Or? Uh, men and women, I'm sorry. Okay. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So, King James Version. Now <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're learning time. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, world, the world has taught us that our imagination is bad. It's just for fun or even only for children. Mm -hmm. And after you grow up, it's time to think like an responsible and logical adult. We even shame ourselves, like I said, telling ourselves it's just my imagination. That'll never happen just a crazy thought. But I ask you, what has happened 
to our wonder and our open hearts. The imagination can allow us to experience the spiritual realm. A quote that the Lord gave me one day when I was driving home, because he talks to me at the most randomest times. But he told me, when surrendered to Jesus, the human imagination becomes a landing strip, a doorway, and an available vessel for the revelation of the kingdom of heaven to land on, pass through, and fill up. Wow. Ooh, can you read that? Yeah, again? can you say that again? <clears throat> wow. Sorry. <laughs> when surrendered to Jesus, mm -hmm. the human imagination becomes a landing strip, a doorway, an available vessel for the revelation of the kingdom of heaven to land upon, to pass through, and to fill up. Mm -hmm. wow. He did not give us this imagination just to entertain ourselves or just to use as children to keep ourselves busy <laughs> and stay out of our parents' hair. He, he used it because it's a means of communication. It's a means of interacting with him. Yeah. And it's not just for children either. That's why he calls us, like it says in Matthew 18, 2 through 4. Jesus called a little child to his side and he said to them, Learn this well, unless you dramatically change your way of thinking and become teachable and learn about Heaven's kingdom realm with wide-eyed wonder of a child, you will never be able to enter in. Whoever continually humbles himself to become like this gentle child is the greatest one in heaven's kingdom realm. What, what? That's Matthew what? That is Matthew 18, 2 through 4 in the Passion Translation. Nice. So as I was studying for this and kind of digging in, I, I came across the, a scientific article which I've come to love because science really does prove God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this article, these scientists have found that when people use their imagination, things are happening in the brain. I'm sorry, when, when people hear stories, okay. it triggers their imagination and it causes mm -hmm. their brain to work. Which, which really just made me wonder, connected right away, that Jesus told stories and parables for a reason. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just trying to be. Uh, or go around, you know, the truth. He was he was really trying to bring what it says in Matthew 18 to life. He wants us to use our imagination because it's the doorway that we enter into God's kingdom in. With that childlike faith, you know what I mean? Because half the things that you read in the Word, if you're not approaching it like a child and just simply believing it or even closing your eyes. Like when I read the Word at home, I play music just like this. I have ADHD. It's car it's hard for me to focus sometimes. <laughs> but this music. You want me to put it louder? No, no, I got okay. it. This music turns it into like story time almost, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it brings it brings the word alive, almost like a story. When I was a kid, I remember, you know, I loved like hearing other people read or stories told because it just it brings it alive. Yeah. So after learning this, I came to the conclusion that when our hearts are surrendered to Jesus, our imagination is free to explore his kingdom. We are meant to use our imagination to bring the things of heaven into existence on earth. We can picture what the Father has in his heart for his children and create it with our words. I, I recently found this uh, Japanese artist, his name is, I'm gonna say it wrong, <laughs> but Matoko Fujimara. Nice. He's a, uh, <laughs> he's a very like, I educated, huh? I'd eat sushi there. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very educated uh, artist that got to go to Japan and do a study with this beautiful, unique Japanese artwork and whatnot. And he actually ha had an encounter with Jesus as he was reading somebody's poem. And he just had this quote that really stood out to me. He says, you cannot love without your imagination because you have to use your imagination at times to picture that person that's in front of you, picture that person that you might not like. For me, it was my father. I had to, I had to allow myself to imagine how mm -hmm. God loved him and how he saw him. Mm -hmm. wow. And then I had to bring myself in into agreement with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I was over here, I avoided my dad for about two and a half years. Yeah. And God called me out and said, you can't love me and not love your father. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know? Okay. Um, I'll bring us a couple of scriptures. Yeah, what you just yeah, said. yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Ephesians 1, uh, 8, 17 and 18, um, it says that the Lord of our, 
the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, so that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Yep. So if we, the eyes of our understanding is... So in the, in the Passion Translation, that same verse actually uses the eyes of your imagination. Right. So, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it really makes you question then, like, what is this imagination? Yes. Is it our is it our understanding? Is it our logical mind? Right. Is it is it our heart? Right. Like, because you can't actually like it's not tangible, you know? Right. Yeah. You can't point like my imagination's right here. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Like it's right here. I got it. You know? right. It's not like. And I, I like how so the eyes of our of your understanding be enlightened. Also in Psalms, it talks about the, the same using that same concept, the eyes of the heart. Yes. Which which I have come to understand is your imagination. Mm. Which I also believe is connected to your spirit because yes. just like Karen was talking about traveling in the spirit and going places and experiencing things, I think your imagination is part of that. Yeah. Because I can close my eyes and I can imagine myself <laughs> being backed up in upstate New York, which is a very scary thought. <laughs> it gets very cold there. Yeah. Come back. <laughs> but you can, you can actually, you can start to feel it, you know. Yeah, yes. yeah you can. And it's connected to your senses. Like you can. So my my mom passed away like mm -hmm. that'll be six years ago now, and I can I can pull her gardenia perfume out of our, my little safe and I can smell it. Mm -hmm. And my my imagination, my mind just runs wild mm -hmm. with all the beautiful thoughts and memories and mm -hmm. just fun times with us you know and I think that's why God gave it to us too because we can we can stop and use our imagination to relive a moment that we experienced with him yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, when we're in that valley when we're in that darkness going going through it whatever it is like school or work or you know the madness of life you can stop and close your eyes and you can go to that place where you had an encounter with the Father, yeah. where you experienced his love and his peace and his presence. And that's kind of what the scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to get even grasp or understand the riches of his glory and yeah. his inheritance yeah. if you shut your imagination off. Yes. So when you read through scripture, that's why we talk about sometimes reading with spirit and the word, bringing mm -hmm. that together mm -hmm. and, and imagining. And you said stories bring what? Bring, causes your imagination, <laughs> yeah. causes you to step in it. Whenever I hear the scripture read, my mind cre creates mm -hmm. the situation in my head, yes. and so then I begin to dwell on that. Mm -hmm. and if you, if we believe that we are created in God's image, which we do, that means we have the creative substance yeah. to then imagine things, mm -hmm. and then what? Create. Yes. Right. Yes. Which... Hey, Dave. Real quick, do you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to. I was going to say, because you mentioned about the spirit of wisdom and revelation, mm -hmm. and how that like really ties to, I was um, listening to John Paul Jackson creativity class, mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. this like amazing instructor in Evergreen, but anyway, she, um, the Lord had her go and look at like where words are first mentioned in the Bible, and the first place that wisdom is mentioned in eight times in a row is when it's the creation of the tabernacle. Mm. And he chose the master craftsman. Remember the guy that he anointed in the Holy yeah, Spirit? Zale. First place that it shows yeah. the Holy Spirit ever being yeah. placed on a person, yeah, too. literally anointed to do it, right? Yeah. And she yeah. tied in, this teacher tied in the proverb, where it's, I am wisdom, mm -hmm. and wisdom is a master craftsman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she asked the question, she's like, well, you know, something about Jesus. Like, why was Jesus a carpenter? He asked her, actually. The Holy Spirit was like, well, ask why was Jesus a carpenter? When you look at what his father, Joseph, was a telco, and telco was like what you kind of do now, master craftsmanship. Yeah. So Jesus didn't just choose to be, people say it was because he was going to inherit the business, but he knew he was going to go into full-time ministry at 30. Yeah. No, that's not why. It's also the process of transformation, too, Yeah. which I think that ties into like why he was maybe a woodworker, because he... You know, he, um, I, I think that God, like, when he creates us, he, he envisions, like Karen was saying, he, he comes up with this beautiful plan, you know, this beautiful 
destiny and then he creates us and pairs us with it yeah. and then puts us here to live it out you know just like like what you just said um everything starts with imagination i also read that i think the united states has the most patents for objects created or you know mm -hmm. and uh it, it reminded me of the verse that says where the where the spirit of the lord is there's there's freedom mm -hmm. freedom to to create you know we we our country was founded on that that freedom to be creative and to be innovative and expressive you know like just this table somebody imagined and envisioned this before it was even here yes yeah. you know i've had the blessing to be blessed with a, a small business where i get to build furniture for people and uh you know i get to go and visit with them and kind of hear their ideas and then just i like to tell them what we're going to do is we're going to take your whatever you have envisioned in your mind and we're going to bring that to life you know because everything everything in this natural world that we see was once just a thought mm -hmm. it was just something that somebody was picturing in their mind you know and and we have we were put here to be to cultivate we were a thought not just relation <laughs> huh we were a thought yes yes we were and it's just kind of like you know i guess like even when like a couple gets married, you know, they're, they're happy and they're married and they're pursuing the Lord. And then they, they imagine like, wow, imagine like this, but with children, mm -hmm. you know, and then they get to add to that. They get to cultivate their family. They well, get to create um, my that. grandfather passed away when my dad was 16. So I never met him. And when I received Christ, knowing that I wasn't raised in a Christian family, I said, Lord, who prayed for me? Somebody had to pray for me. Yeah. So I asked him, and I saw a vision of someone, someone, in a rocking chair with a Bible. And after I got saved, the Lord said, you and your household will be saved. And my uncles, my cousins, my nieces, my nephews were all getting saved. <laughs> and I went to lunch with my uncle, and I said, please tell me about my grandfather. I want to know. And he said... He used to sit in a rocking chair and read his Bible, and we would climb on his lap. And I said, he prayed for me to receive Jesus. Wow. 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 That's good. So, I know to some people this thought of using your imagination seems kind of far out there or, like, unattainable, you know? But I think it's more real. I think we do it on a daily basis and we don't realize it. Mm -hmm. yes. Because fear entertains the imagination very well. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the enemy taunts us all the time and uses our imagination. You know, it's almost like a projector. He's popping in slides. You know what I mean? And, and he's getting us to focus on this thing in our imagination. That There's many examples of... Uh, Andrew and Mike sent me this video and he was explaining that like you, you go to the ATM and you know you have a lot less money than what you thought you had and right away your imagination starts to go through this scary path of like oh my god I'm sure the situation you're going through your mind runs wild yeah. you know and you start envisioning all these terrible things mm -hmm. so it's not this it's not that we don't have the ability to do this we do it's just taking that powerful imagination that we are given and using it surrendering it yes. submitting it to god and telling him to use it which we we do it says in first corinthians 2 16 for who has the mind of the lord that he will instruct him <laughs> but we have the mind of christ we have the mm -hmm. mind of christ so imagine what we could use our imagination to when it's seeing the possibilities of the kingdom manifest in our lives which could be in creativity which could be in ministry which could be in loving those around us the way that God does this is another one that I like Romans 12 too. do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove that God's so that may prove what the will of God is, mm -hmm. which is good and acceptable and perfect. Mm -hmm. Just like I think you mentioned earlier, we have to be careful what we what we watch, you know. And uh, I don't really watch TV. People think I'm weird. <laughs> kind of gave it up a couple years ago. I don't think I really did. I think God kind of just took it away from me. But um, 
even with music, you know, like I love music without words mm -hmm. because it just mm -hmm. allows my mind just oh. to. <laughs> Some people think it's weird, but I love I love music without words because it just lets you create whatever you want, you yeah. know. And when it's when when your heart is full of Jesus, you don't have to be afraid. Like we were saying, you don't have to be afraid to to explore this creativity or or you know allow your thoughts to for him to show you things which i know in the church a lot you probably know more history on this than i do but the church has kind of demonized art and creativity for yeah. a long time and they said you know that's not of god and push that aside and that's that's foolishness it's us you know? it's our souls yes. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah when you believe that the soul, soul is, is bad, bad. And the body is bad and Everything's bad. Yeah. You, know, you start to shut down and you cut out. Like what you were talking about with children, right? Mm -hmm. Growing up, I used to go out and, and we had these azalea bushes along the side of the house. And I would try to get my, you know, my brother and my family, kids, other kids to play with me. And they wouldn't do it. And I was like, they, I like to play, you know, and I like to, and nobody would do it. So I would just go out by myself and I would, I would write songs in my head mm. and then I would sing them <laughs> and they were probably terrible songs but um, I thought they were cool and then Jesus would I would I would talk to the Lord and he would be there and he would and it was almost I thought I was making up stuff yeah. so I would literally the Lord would show me my future mm -hmm. and things that I would do in the future and I thought I was crazy and so um, as I grew older I was I was I would tell people, because I had already seen it happen, so I would tell people things that were about to come, yeah. and <laughs> I made a lot of enemies, because, <laughs> um, you know, it's one thing to have an arrogant kid tell you your future, and then it's another thing for it to come to pass, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, it, you know, but the, the, Lord's, the Lord and I spent a lot of time together, and it honestly, it wasn't what I wanted, I wanted to go play with other kids. Mm -hmm but there wasn't any available so i would literally play games with the lord like we would go out and he would we would create a whole scenario you know i uh believe it or not like i was an nfl quarterback and i won the super bowl one time <laughs> and, and i went through every game you know i, I went through every scenario um, i built some of the most amazing homes you could ever imagine yeah. Yeah. and but I used to, awesome. as I grew older, I began to use that to my advantage. So when I got into, like, um, I worked for my dad, so I didn't have a lot of time to do schoolwork, mm -hmm. right? So I would have to scramble to get all my work done, schoolwork done, literally in a couple of hours every day. Just otherwise, or, or several times we'd go days without doing schoolwork, and then I'd have to catch up. Don't tell mom. Um, <laughs> but the what would happen is, is I had to I had to be able to learn quickly I had to learn how to learn quickly mm -hmm. and how to gather information quickly otherwise you know I would have failed mm -hmm. and um, but I also um, my time spent with the Lord um, I didn't know I was spending time with the Lord when I was a kid mm -hmm. I was, it was just me my imagination and I was told you know and I was taught kind of like everyone else your imagination is not really it's just your imagination yeah. right yeah. that's what we're taught it's just your imagination yeah. and we're not taught not the real. beauty and the spiritual and the interaction but later on the lord spoke to me actually i was standing like right here when he did uh one night when we were worshiping and he said i was with you i was with you while you were playing those games i was with you when you were struggling i was with you you know and i i i was <sighs> thank you lord i was interacting with you and that's why as a kid I was so full of joy like yeah. it would just like pop yeah. out of me yeah. like it was just like um, and the Lord told me so one day I will restore that you know one day that will happen again and um, but throughout my life I've used it I was sharing with you earlier um, I'll talk about something a little more analytical so I stop crying. Um, my father and I, my brother, and, and we used to build homes. And my dad, the day before, he'd hand me a package. And in the package was this 8 by 11 sheet of paper, and it would have the trust layout of these homes. And so the homes we built weren't these little 1,200 square foot houses. They were like sometimes 10 and 12,000 square foot. They're huge homes with complicated trust systems and buildings. And he would hand me the sheet of paper. 
And sometimes it's a full sheet, sometimes it's a small sheet. And it looked like tons of lines and measurements, right? And you had to get it, cause I would take that sheet, he would give it to me the day or two before, because he learned, once he, what he figured out is I would sit there and I would study it. And I would formal, formulate like a plan in my mind of how we were gonna set all these trusses because you have a crew of about eight, 10 guys, you have a very expensive crane, you gotta get it done on a certain period of time, and you're only paid so much to do the project, so you have to complete it on time. But you gotta have someone on the ground that knows how to organize it, set it up, make sure all the right trusses are flying, make sure the right direction, the right ends are flying, and you gotta make sure everything is lined up properly. And so you, and when they dump these big truss loads, they do not jump them in order. Like they just show up with these semis, they dump them on the ground, and then you have to sort them out and you have to be able to sort it quick. Mm. And so I would spend the day before memorizing and learning exactly how we were going to set all these trusses and the format that we were gonna use. Wow. And then the day of, all we had to do was do it. You know what I mean? I could sort the trusses quickly. I could even go the day before, sort all the trusses so I knew exactly where everything was flying, and then we could just go. Yeah. And so, um, mm -hmm. but I use, I would literally go to bed after reading it and studying it, I would go to bed at night, and I would think over the next day. Mm -hmm. I knew exactly how it was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I knew exactly where everything, and I would just replay the day in my mind, mm -hmm. and then I'd wake up the next morning, and I would do it. Yeah. Now, when it didn't go that way, sometimes it's very frustrating. Yeah. But um, Alicia, who does gymnastics, um, they were teaching her, too, to do her routine and her imagination, and then she could go and do it in real life. Yeah, while they're in the competition, so they have uh, the different, um, oh, I can't think of the word. Choreography. The routines. 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 In between, because you have to wait your turn, they have the coaches have all of the girls close their eyes and imagine their routines if they are not able to warm up before right before so I thought when I saw all of the girls with their eyes closed in the chair one time I was like no way <laughs> I was like they're doing it yeah so I mean obviously we can see having your imagination open to the Lord allows him to show you things and, and worship for me it's in worship a lot of times so show me things as you as you pray having an open imagination actually changes the way you changes the way that you minister to people <laughs> so one of my experiences this year was really cool I uh, I was on the phone with a friend in my garage and this this gentleman was walking past my house and he stopped in my driveway and he was mumbling something, I couldn't hear him, so I hung up the phone and I talked to him and he seemed like he was about to cry, you know, he was just really going through it and he was asking for money and, uh, you know, I just got to know him and he had a, a weird name I cannot pronounce right, <laughs> but um, anyways, I invited him in and, you know, I, I said, well, we're at least going to pray for you, so me and my roommate prayed for him and uh, as I had my eyes closed praying for him, I saw a bouquet of flowers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you're like, okay, what is, what is that? Mm -hmm. And so being childlike though, you got to kind of have some fun with it. So yeah. I asked him, I was like, well, when's the last time you bought your wife flowers? And right away he started to cry and I knew, okay, this is something, something's here, you know? Mm -hmm. So let's keep pressing into it. And, uh, he went on to tell me that, you know, it's been years since I've been able to buy my wife flowers because we just, we've always struggled and then just try to work and take care of my kids. It's just like, I haven't had money to, to do that for her. So long story short though, by, by allowing God to, to um, like I was telling my brother Jason, having your imagination was like having open hands, you know? And the Lord can, he can set something there and it allows you to examine it and check it out and look at it from all different angles and get something out of it, yeah. you know? So anyways, we ended up blessing him with some, some funds and getting him some flowers for his wife and praying wow. over his marriage and just wow. sending him home yeah. to just, you know, bless his wife and just bless him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I kind of lost. Uh, let's see. So, there's 
one more thing I feel the Lord showed me. Um, so our imagination can actually paint the lens, or not paint, but create the lens that we see the world in, you know? Mm -hmm. Each one of us in this room, um, there's a really good video on YouTube by Graham Cook called uh, Changing Your Spiritual Lens. Mm -hmm. You've never seen that, I recommend it, it's really good. Yes. But he talks about as you go through life, you, your lens changes, you know? And uh, from, from a kid, I experienced a lot of like domestic violence and things like that, you know? And the way I viewed certain things in the world was kind of twisted and tainted, you know? And as you get to know the Lord more, he, he, can, he can clean that lens, he can polish it, and he can refine it. And it was making me think about Paul. Obviously, we know Paul had this crazy encounter with the Lord. And in and, and the Bible, it says that scales fell from his eyes. And I don't know if this is biblically true, so if it's not, you can stop me. But I wonder if maybe there was actual physical scales on his eyes, or maybe his imagination had been callous. Maybe it was hardened, you know? So when, the, when he had this encounter with God's love, it, it broke that off and it gave him a new lens to see the world through. Because mm -hmm. when you have a distorted lens, you can be doing things and you think you're doing the right thing, you know, because your heart's in it. And you think you're doing the Lord good or you think you're, you're loving your brother or your sister, but you're actually doing harm, you know, and you're doing more damage. You're causing people to stumble and to fall. So by having, like it says in the word, renewing, the constant renewing of your mind, you know, as we go through this journey, because we're only here on this earth temporarily, we got to think of eternity, right? So we're getting ready to be brought into the fullness of Christ. Yeah. So I think, I think that Paul not only had a, a physical revisioning, I guess mm -hmm. you could say, but also in his imagination, I think yeah. his imagination was totally rewired. Because then he had a different lens and he had a different motivation and he, and he saw things differently. He saw people differently. He saw them with God's love and, and he saw what the Father was doing clearly and he lived that out. So I think I just want to end with a verse that has really became a huge part of my life and that is Ephesians 2.10 which is actually the, the name of my little small business, 210 Woodworks. But the verse in the NLT says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do good things he planned for us long ago. And I think trying to imagine yourself as a masterpiece that God created because we all know we have pasts and we have histories and they're not pretty, you know? <laughs> yeah. But God says that he, we are his masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to look at art, I love design, and then I look at these things and I even design and build things myself and it really hits home because when you create something from your imagination with your hands and you bring it into this world, mm -hmm. you are proud of it. You are so proud of it, and you want to show it off, and you put your name on it proudly. And that is us. We are Christ's masterpiece. Amen. So now I think we're going to allow the Lord to show us some things in our own imagination. I want to... You know, there's throughout scripture and we were talking about it's even the yeah about right there I'll turn it up once I once I complete a little bit higher throughout scripture um, and throughout the Bible we talk about it, it puts it together these stories even Jesus everything he talked about he spoke in these parables that was designed to cause people's eyes of their heart and their imagination to become open and to be able to think upon and dwell upon what he did even even um, when he went to the to the cross have you ever in your imagination just thought about what that may have looked like put yourself there have you ever went down to the sea where 
and in, in the river where, where John the Baptist was and he baptized Jesus and, and God's voice thundered out. This is my son. Can you imagine in whom I'm well pleased? Can you imagine the dove, the spirit descending like a dove and it being visible and, and people being able to experience that? So today, I want us to, I want to read, I want to build a, a little picture here, and it's going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to try to develop a picture with my words, and I want you guys to all close your eyes and follow along with it, and at some point, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to say you guys can take it from here. Jesus can take it from here. And I want you guys to then go and, and do whatever you see in the spirit at that point. Okay? Everybody can hear me okay? Even in the back, Josh, you good? Okay. Can I just say one thing real quick? Yeah. There is, there is no right or wrong to this. Yes. And we can all do this. Like, I was, I was, you can just picture right now, you can picture like a red apple, you know? And you can just see it clear as day, or you can picture your bedroom. Or your house, you know, yeah, and and you know you can have fun with it. So just allow that childlike personality to just come forth and just yeah. allow it to be created. One thing we can do is we can ask the Holy Spirit to show us something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, whatever your heart is right now for the people in this room, show me something. Right. Yeah. Amen. And we can go. We'll do that maybe a little bit after. Uh, but right now, I want to take us on a specific journey. And then I'm going to drop you at some point. And at that point, I want you to just do what you see in the spirit. Whatever you see. And it can be different for everyone. Okay? Um, and it it's, can be fun. It can... Ever, and, and I want you to think about, once you get done with it, we're going to actually ask a few people to share what happened to them yeah. during that time. So that you guys can see how it's different for every single person. Okay? So, um, if you want to get comfortable, if you want to lay down, um, I may um, turn up the music a little bit more once I get into this. You're good, girl. Get comfy. But I'm going to take you to a place where I go to meet Jesus, and I know Andrea does a does a little bit of version of this. I think David, you do it too sometimes. We've all done it here before. Get settled, fully relaxed. <sighs> His presence is here. Close your eyes and look in the eyes of your spirit, in your imagination. And there's a road. It's a dirt road. And about 50 or so feet in front of you is a giant cross. It looks like the cross that Jesus hung on, but he's not there. It's an empty cross. And I want you to walk towards that cross. And as you're walking towards the cross, I want you to look down at your right hand and your left hand. And some of you are carrying something in your hands. And if you are, as you approach the cross, there's hooks on the cross. And those of you who are carrying things that can be hung there, just 
put them on those hooks as you approach the cross. You have to walk up to it first. And if you're carrying something that can't be hung, just set it down there at the foot of the cross. Just lay it down. Now, as you face the cross, there's a door. And I want you to push that door open and step through the cross. And on the other side of that cross is a beautiful forest. Gorgeous. It's got a path running right in front of you with the most beautiful vegetation, with plants. You can smell, there's a light breeze, and you can smell the flowers that are blooming all around you. There's beautiful lilies and roses, all different colors. And they almost appear to be alive, like dancing in beauty. There's like a different vibration there of beauty. And you can smell the fragrances of the beautiful flowers and lush vegetation and green vegetation. And there's a path that's leading downwards. It's kind of a winding path. And just walk down that path. Beautiful. It's like down into a valley there. And as you come around the bend, you're going to see a beautiful stream. Now this stream, you couldn't see it when you came through, but now it's right in front of you. It's beautiful, flowing water. The water's crystal, perfectly clear. And you can look into the stream right to the bottom, and you, it almost looks like gold dust at the bottom where there would normally be sand is gold dust, solid gold dust. And there's fish in the stream and they're all different colors, beautiful colors. And they're swimming all over the place and they're having fun and they're swimming all over. And, you're, and you, you don't have any shoes on, you're just in your bare feet. So you're just gonna step right down into that gold dust right into that stream and you're gonna wade in. You're just gonna keep wading in deeper, deeper, deeper. And the water is so perfect, it's just beautiful. It feels like life itself. And you're gonna go walk right under that water and you can breathe under that water. And the fish are swimming all around you, they're greeting you. Hey, and they're greeting you, they're checking you out, they're so excited you're there. And as you walk through the stream, you're going to walk down the stream, not across, but down the stream to the, to the left there. You're going to walk a little ways, and then you're going to like jump a little, There's and you're in the water, so there's no gravity, so you can kind of float. It's beautiful, it's so comforting, the water just is the most perfect water could ever imagine. So beautiful. And you're going to come up out of the stream now as the stream kind of curves so you came up out of it and you walk out of it. And as you look up, there's Jesus standing there. A big smile on his face. And he's looking at you, his beautiful blue eyes. Looking at you, smiling. I'm just going to leave you there with Jesus. 